So it is the second part of our retro sect extravaganza. We had this on Monday and now we're in the other side with the classic cars and the little retro area. But we're going to start by talking to Ben. We're going to pass the mic to him. He's going to tell you a little bit about what his inspirations are for this amazing and unique place here in the UK. Uh, so I've been working uh, in the car, the, the used car market for a while now. Um, I worked for a place called Classic Motor Hub that was selling or is selling unobtainable classic cars, as far as I'm concerned. You know, really expensive Ferraris and Bugattis and all that kind of stuff. So I cut my teeth at the, the high end, but very quickly realized that I didn't kind of feel passionate about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I appreciate it. But actually, the stuff I'm passionate about is the stuff that I was lusting after when I was growing up. And um, my biggest influence is, is my dad. Um, my dad worked for Car Magazine in the 80s, um, well, late 70s to 80s. Um, he was the art director there. So he was bringing cars home that they were doing photo shoots with. Um, the big one that sticks in my mind is a Lancia Delta Integrale, which is a pretty famous rally car. Um, and uh, so my passion was driven by, by that originally. I went through some wilderness years of, of not caring about cars because, you know, in the, in the early 2000s when I passed my test, cars were pretty boring and they were just, you know, a thing to me. But in the kind of, you know, the last 10 years, I've really rekindled my love for them with working at the place I used to work at. Um, so, yeah, I just, uh, I like weird things. I don't necessarily have a, a kind of a usual selection that you'd see in most car showrooms. Um, the things that I've got in here are all pretty unique or, or interesting for one reason or another. Um, I own some of these and a couple of them are consigned. People have, uh, have put them here on sale or return. Um, but uh, to be kind of, to be right to fit in this showroom, it needs to be uh, ideally 80s or early 90s and it needs to be either a exceptional example like this little Lancia here um, is not the top end Lancia it's not a hundred thousand pound Integrale it is was the kind of the base spec when they came out but because it's was was the base spec and it was just a car to a lot of people they've just all disappeared so there's only I think four of these left now and this is by far the, the nicest one. It's all original and it's 37,000 miles on it. Um, so it's a real survivor. Um, everyone gravitates to that when they come in. I think a lot of people have got a lot of nostalgia for, for Lancers and stuff because they're just not around anymore. Um, the little metro in the corner here, um, I wouldn't have necessarily gone out to find a metro to, to, to be in the showroom but they are disappearing so quickly now. And this one is, again, a fully original car, but it's got 17 and a half thousand miles on it. Um, it was part of a, a Jaguar heritage collection, so it's been really well looked after and stuff. But it is, it's a metro. It's something that is part of the, the kind of the British motoring history. Everyone knows somebody who had a metro or their gran had a metro or something so the green one. There, there you go yeah there were some pretty horrific horrific colors that they did they did like a mustardy green one yeah um i don't think you'd get away with having that on anything but like a supercar or something now would you um so that's like a proper survivor car um and then behind you here um, this one is uh, a pretty unusual car. It's, uh, it's an Alpine GTA, so it's a Renault, basically. Okay. But they were badged as Renault in the UK and Alpine everywhere else. Um, this has got the same engine running gear as a DeLorean. But it's not undertuned like it is in a DeLorean. So if you, um, if you ever have the opportunity to drive a DeLorean, do. Yeah. But don't expect much from it okay. because they are terrible cars to drive. Okay. This is what they should have driven like. Mm -hmm. um, the Americans got the DeLorean and they basically turned down the engine and made it kind of a bit soft and a bit rubbish. Whereas this has got the engine how it should be performing and driving how they should drive. Um, 
And this is one you own, isn't it? This is one I own and I've spent way too much money on it. I've had it repainted. I've had loads of mechanical work to it. Um, because they're, they're plastic bodies, then it's not a metal body car. So they're, they're quite specialist. Um, so I took it to a place down south of Gloucester who did a load of work on it for me. And she'd be good, She's happy now, really yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> so they did a, did a lot of work on it for me. And now it is, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty happy to say it's the best one that there is in the country now. Um, My eyes were drawn to it it reminds me i don't know why it's just the red it's just the outrun car yeah it's yeah like well that was a testarossa so yeah it, it, was, it was quite different but it is this was the most aerodynamic car that had been produced up until some ridiculous supercar that came out only about 20 years ago so it was it was really ahead of its time when it came out but it's also kind of got weird french quirks about it um same as the, the BX behind you there. So, um, there you go. Um, so everyone, I would have thought, has seen a BX before. Um, there was one point where they were really common in the UK, but this is the 4x4 GTI version. So it's kind of about as the top BX that you could get. Um, yeah, so it's got proper four by four and it's still got the suspension. You can lift it all the way up. So I suppose, you know, in France, a French farmer could trundle across a field in it or something. Yeah. <laughs> Not in the UK. There was, again, I think there is either three or four of these left now, depending who you listen to. Um, so again, super rare, unusual, you know, ridiculous boxy lines. That's, that's what I like. I like all the angles and... You know, it's not all aerodynamic. It's kind of, it's just interesting. Um, so many new cars now are just sterile or over-designed. So you either get it so that every kind of new SUV almost looks the same and you don't know wh what brand they're from. Um, oh, I think she wants some more water. Um, or, uh, or they're kind of so over-designed that they just end up being hideous because of it. Um, so yeah, I think that's a really cool thing. Again, it's pretty immaculate. It's the interior is lovely, lowish miles, eighty-four thousand miles, which for a well, nineteen ninety, so thirty-three-year-old car, it's looking pretty good for its age. And then this one, um, so this is another one that I don't own. This is a consignment. This is a Fiat X19. Um, they rebadged it as a Batoni X19 after they've been selling them for a few years just to make it a little bit more Italian and interesting, basically. Um, but they are fantastic little two-seater sports cars. Um, the problem is that most of them have suffered with severe rust. So they are around, but you don't see them very much at all anymore. And this one, again, this is really original. And so, so to find one that hasn't had lots of welding and lots of stuff done to it, that's the difficult part, to be honest. Um, I've done a couple of little bits and pieces since it's been here to, to make it even better. Um, but yeah, they're just, it's a very, very cool thing. Engine in the back. Um, yeah. And then the last one, which isn't for sale, but <laughs> is kind of the showpiece in here. Turismo, the Nissan Skyline. Yeah. So, I know this. so they've been doing, so this was kind of the first one that people referred to as the Skyline, I suppose. Um, so this is a 1984 Nissan Skyline RSX Turbo C Iron Mask, which is a really catchy name, as I'm sure you agree. So they did a few variants of them. It's called the Iron Mask because it's got a flat front on it. Um, and was the one that they used to base the Japanese racing cars off, basically. So it's, again, it's the top Nissan of its period. Um, at the moment, it's suspiciously hollow in there because I'm having the engine rebuilt um, at, uh, at pretty obscene cost. But it's potentially a very uh, collectible car. There's only two of them on the road in the UK. Um, once the engine's back in it, I will be taking it to shows and kind of using it to show off retrosect, basically. Um, and I've even got the original Skyline Racing Team jacket with it as well. Oh, wow. oh yeah, it's in a car. Oh, my goodness. Black 
interior. The mm. interior is really nice. Well, the problem with these is because when they were kind of new-ish, you know, during the 80s, people were taking them uh, off racing and they were taking drifting, particularly when drifting first started coming in. Loads of these got ruined in Japan and a load more of them got ruined in Australia, um, where most of them got exported to. So now the, the difficult part you can still find occasionally one for sale in Japan or Australia, but they've usually got all of the drift parts on them and all of the kind of original bits taken off. And so this one, even things like having the original steering wheel and the gear knob and stuff um, is really rare on these. So, um, yeah, I did originally buy it to sell, but it, yeah, I kind of fell in love with it a little bit. So <laughs> I will likely do all the stuff to it, make it perfect, drive it for a while, and then decide whether I'm gonna yeah. gonna keep it or sell it. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, so you're very go. passionate, and you've got the little yeah. kind of amazing all the kind of movie posters around. Yeah, like, absolutely. The, the so, traffic lights in the window. Yeah, not traffic lights. What would you describe? Yeah, they, 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 they that were, that was a traffic light of some okay. description. I got given the bits. There, um, I just thought they would look cool in here. I was originally gonna. Um, Put lights in them or something but it's one of these things where i've got i've had a million ideas and not caught up with it yet so maybe at some point i'll get turned into lights um i've got a bit of clothing in here as well so a friend of mine who does these one-off um t-shirts so she's a photographer so she takes all the photos does all the printing herself um and has made this nice range of t-shirts um, a few nissan things just to go with the, the nissan theme um, and then i've also got a little bit of uh, period car audio stuff so all of the original head units um, because a lot of people are buying older cars now and you'd see it if you looked in the Fiat or in the, the Lancia they've got modern head units in them and it just doesn't look right so a lot of people now are either going back to what it should have had originally or um, some of the, I think I've only got two at the moment but retrofitting Bluetooth into them so you can have the original look but be able to connect your phone to it and use it in a modern way. Um, and then badges and wheels and yeah, a bit of everything really. Um, like I said to you before, it's just, I've kind of tried to get all the things that I like and, and hope that other people <laughs> like them and want to buy them as well, basically. Well, I'm sure people will come down anyway. We've got, the, we did the retro stuff Monday. We'll show you more retro stuff now, of course, with the retro game fans. Um, but everything will be linked in the description if you want to come down here yourself down and Molly clearly wants to go out so we better take her out for <laughs> her business. I need a few seconds of your time to tell you about channel memberships. If you guys want to become a channel member, click join from the main page or the second link in the description. There are three tiers, all with different perks for you if you want to become a team member. Thanks for your time. Let's continue with the video. So it is an official and wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm 40, but you know, how are we looking? Pretty good. Yeah? All set for work? All set for school. And it's tightened up. There's loads it's, of room. It actually fits really well, you know. Could carry my Game Boy, my PSP, my Atari Lynx. It's wicked. So what's the story behind this? Where's this kind of uh, come from? Honestly, if I found it on eBay. Cool. I have looked and looked and looked to try and find information about it. Yeah. All I can, I found one other picture of one online. There was no information. Okay. Um, that was a Spanish website. Oh, so really? I don't know what good is that. But there was another one that was, was like a holdable kind of yeah. bag. Yeah. Which, same colours, same everything on it, but just a different shape. Yeah. So I know it's legitimate. Yeah. But from where? No one. Who knows. knows? Who actually knows? Which is why I haven't put an actual price on it, because I just, I don't know. It is amazing. What do you think? I think it's cool. It's wicked, isn't it? Have you ever, like, Google reverse image searched yeah. it? Yeah, that was the first yeah. thing I did. Ah. <laughs> clever. Oh, yeah. clever. Clever, clever. Yeah. But no, there's just nothing to find about it. Why am I tempted? Because you haven't seen one before. I've already been offered 40 quid and I said no. Okay, so that gives the benchmark then. I, well, it has to be, it has to be 60, 70 quid. Yeah. I mean, I've seen other similar things go for more than that. Okay. 
Um, Banjo Kazooie on the side right there. We also have the classic Mario Kart 64. Mario 64, I mean, it just oozes A64 goodness, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just, and of course, it's the Mario color of the blue, the red. It is, it is literally the man himself all in one package. Oh, it's amazing. Are we in the retro area? Yeah. And of course, as well as the classic cars, we have a little retro corner. We have the PS2 set up. We're rocking a bit of test drive with the wheel. And can I just say that these are very, very comfortable sofas. So if you come in here, you've got some great comfort. You can play some games and just chill and then go retro game shopping. I mean, this place is amazing. We've also got some fantastic GameCube games here that I almost missed. Um, never seen this one, Dakar 2. Don't dream it, do it. Oh, wow. Well, the petrol heads, which of course, we're gonna go into the classic car showroom in this episode. In fact, we'll go there now. Guys, we have this ultra rare PlayStation 2 TV. Now what this was, was a PlayStation 2 essentially built into the Sony TV. These are like rocking horse turds. They're very rare, but when you get them in, in this condition, it looks really, really nice. Um, you gotta snap them up. Um, they're not for me, but nonetheless, there's people out there that just eat these alive. Let's just take a look around the back of this thing here. Got all the ports on the back there. You got the HDMI, got all everything, even Scott. A component cable uh, ports, the lot. It's even been pat tested. Fan freaking tastic. That's amazing. So I mentioned briefly that my dad uh, worked at Car Magazine in the 80s. And when I was working at the previous place, he suddenly kind of revealed that he had all of this archive of stuff um, from, from when he was working there. So I've got all of the original Car Magazines, but also kind of original layouts when they were planning front covers and drawings and pictures of my dad with cars and stuff. One little thing, uh, did you video the um, remote control car behind the counter? Um, a little bit of footage earlier. Get some B-roll of that okay. because it's there in the boot of a Fiat Panda advert from oh, I see it. Oh, oh, 1991 or something like that. Um, so it's nice to have the little links yeah. like that. and. Um, and weird stuff like this that I've got, where um, that's me right there in this 1993 car choice calendar. Um, th it's a bit of an odd one, this one, because I look through it and it's almost like a bit of family history. So my dad owned that car for a while. I don't know who the guy is, but we definitely had the car. Um, those were our chickens. That's our old garden. That was where my sister did a bit of horse riding. Uh, don't know where that one is. That one is probably Western Supermare, I would have thought, looking at it. Um, that one's, do you know the, um, the biplanes? They have the wing walkers. Oh, they yeah, used to be yeah. crunchy and then they were utterly butterly. Yeah. That was the hangar where they lived, which is kind of the other side of Sirencester. Um, and then that's my dad. Another random one. That's my grandparents. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> With the, and that's their boat in the background. And, and then that's another, I don't know what, where that is or anything. That was our old school. And that's my sister in the background. Um, another random one. And in there, that's me cleaning the wheels of this Seat whilst my sister spins her umbrella. So it was really nice um, when my dad gave me this kind of archive of stuff, going back through and exploring all the stuff that my dad was doing when I was kind of young and clueless and didn't, didn't know what, uh, what he was doing. So uh, if you are into kind of old automotive journalism, I suppose, then you're very welcome to come down and, and read through the magazines and, uh, and, and yeah.
and enjoy it. It's there for people to, to use as a, a bit of an archive, I suppose. And if you're eagle-eyed and you're on your way out after spending lots of cash, you'll see this really cool Terminator bottle opener. Oh my goodness. People have used it as well. Neat.